Hello. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of things that you can do to check the progress of your cutting when you're doing a multi-block print and also the accuracy of your alignment. Now you will have noticed that the way um, that I've been developing my multi-block prints is quite flexible. I'm mapping them out and then I'm cutting into them and then I'm editing that cutting and doing a bit more. So it's it's very movable. It's not sort of very uh, cut and dried, for want of a better way of putting it. So there are a couple of ways that I use to check my progress when I'm cutting. And I'm going to show you a double rubbing, which is something that I do quite a lot. So um, the two blocks that I'm going to do this rubbing from are from the Buckinghamshire Graphic series. So that's the Buckinghamshire print with the frame around it. And I've got two blocks from the four blocks that make up the print. I've got the third block in the series, which is the sort of uh, overall green block that's going to do the foreground and most of the tree, the big set of trees up here. And I've got the fourth block, which is the final block, which is the dark shadow that's going to go on top of everything. And you can see I've begun to cut leaves into the trees on these two blocks. When I map them out, if I just show you the, the tracing, you can see, let me turn the tracing round so that it matches the prints, it'll probably make it easier to show you. You can see I've got these sort of funny like map out lines over the areas in the trees where I want, you know, it's lighter here and it's darker here and so forth. But when it comes to actually cutting, I'm not going around the edges of these mapping marks, I'm actually just using them as a guide. So to check whether I'm happy with how these are developing, I'm going to do a rubbing of both blocks together. And I've actually done the first uh, rubbing here. Now I've used my registration device to do this because it's going to hold the trace, uh, the rubbing paper in the, the right place. You don't have to do that. You could just line it up um, by hand, but it's quite convenient because it's, it's all held in place. So you can see I've already taken a rubbing from this block using my graphite stick and we when we were trying to work out how to shoot this video we thought we'll do it in different colored pencils it'll be much easier to see and actually it was it wasn't really working I always find the graphite sticks the easiest ways of taking a rubbing so I'm going to do it in two layers of graphite and um, settle for that so I'll pop my other block under and then rub over it and rub harder. This technique is um, a technique that I learned in Japan when I was doing uh, Japanese woodblock prints, which is a multi-block process. And it's just a good way of keeping tabs on what you're doing. So as I press harder, I can then see the dark areas as well. Now, we're hopeful this will show on the film, but it goes without saying, if you're actually sitting in front of the rubbing, you can see it much more clearly. Okay, so now I've done that, let me take this off the device and put it onto some white paper. That I can see and you can see I can then look and see around the edges that's all lining up really nicely and I can see here I've got the first layer and the dark layer starts in here but I could probably do with taking some more darks out over in this area so just by doing that rubbing I, I can very swiftly see that I need to edit it a little bit and take some more um, some more cutting out so it's just a quick way of checking. Obviously printing it would be the ideal way, but this is a sort of as you're going way of, of looking at it. And um, while we're here, I just wanted to look at the cutting that I've been doing um, and show you how I've been doing these little leaf shapes. So I'm using a five millimeter U gouge here and I'm just doing little strokes like so. And because I'm using traditional lino, of course, the lino snaps at the end of the stroke. So it's giving me these nice little leafy strokes. And 
this is a bush and that's the tree and the way that I've divided the two is that the bush I cut all, all going upwards in this direction whereas the leaves on the tree I simply turned the liner up the other way and came at it from this direction coming down so they're basically the same mark that I'm making it's just the they the one's going up and one's coming down um, and then the other thing, while we're here, you can see that I've mapped out the daisies in the field in the foreground. And somebody asked me how I do little circles. And the trick actually is you can use your tool as almost like a punch. So if I just show you here, I've got a little daisy shape there. I'm going to go in and just use the end of the tool to punch out those shapes. Now you can get perfect circles if you want to um, using that method and some of these will be circles but as you can see a lot of them are quite random shapes so in that case I'll probably be just using my U to just ease out those little random shapes. So that's just a note on cutting and now I'm going to show you the next bit of rubbing that I've been doing. In this next um, use of the rubbing, it's a slightly different use, and this time I'm going to use it a rubbing to make adjustments to a block before I cut. So here I've gone over to the Buckinghamshire one that is more painterly, more natural, doesn't have the border. But I've got the same, I've got the fourth block, which is the darkest block, and I've got the third block, um, which in this print is actually a shadow block. So I have a number three block which is mid-tone shadow, number four block which is the darkest shadow block. Again I've taken a rubbing from the number three block. This time I haven't bothered with the registration device because I wanted to show you that you could perfectly well do it without. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it over to my block that I haven't cut yet and I'm going to just take a moment to line it up a little bit so that I've got I've got a corner there at the top that I'm just using to line up with and let me stick it down and what that does is I can see where the shadows are now and it means that I can just check that my um, darkest shadow block the shadows are in the right place there may be some places where I don't want that dark shadow anymore so looking at this in my tree, I've got some dark shadows over here, which is absolutely fine because I've got the big pale canopy of the tree there and I want some dark shadows. But here, in this bit, I've got no mid-tone shadow, but suddenly I've got dark shadow and I don't want it there. So I know that that little bit of um, dark shadow there is is not going to work it's not relevant so I can I know that I can just cut that out and I don't I don't want it likewise if I look at how the mid-tone shadows are coming down into the foreground I can see that the dark shadows tie up with them all except I would say here there's dark there's mid-tone shadow working there so that's okay but here again I've got just like up here, I've got sort of isolated dark shadow there that's just too contrasty. There's no, it's not tying in with the mid-tone shadow. So I know that this particular little bit of the drawing, again, is not relevant. But when I look at this and check it, there may be places where I want a little bit more shadow, like for example, in this place here I've got a lot of mid-tone but no dark shadow so I know that I want to add some dark shadow there so that it fits in with the tracing so I'm using the rubbing kind of just as a little guide so that I can check and what I'll probably do is, I know these bits are going to come out, so I'll take those out. So I'll, I'll add in a few little dark lines here and there. And then I'll, when I've cut away everything, I'll print the two blocks and I'll probably still make adjustments. But this is just getting rid of surplus stuff. 
So you can use a rubbing in that way um, quite usefully when you're working. In this last part of the film, I want to talk to you about getting things accurately aligned. The previous two uh, little tips were about editing your picture as you were going along. In this one, I want to check that the blocks line up. So it's it's all to do about the frame in this in this instance. So I've gone back to my Buckinghamshire picture with the frame here. And what I want is to check that the frame, where the frame lies here is the same as where it lies here. Now, if you have a multi-block print with a border, I would, and you're working like I am, where you're sort of quite flexible about how you do things, I would get the one with the border cut first, and then you can do this trick to check that things line up, because I have a suspicion that with this block, there's a little bit of extra on the edge here and I'm not quite happy about it. So I'm going to um, use some offset inking to check where the frame is. So I'm going to use water-based ink to do this simply because um, it's, it's less of a faff and it will dry quicker on the lino um, so that I can cut. So if you use oil-based inks or safe wash inks that are oil-based usually, it's quite a good idea to just have um, a, some cheap water-based lino ink around if you want to do this kind of thing, because the, the water-based ink will dry quickly on the lino so that you can get on with your cutting. So what I'm going to do, um, and you'll need to either use your registration device if you're using that, or whatever means you have for your registration. And I'm going to pop my block into my registration device here because I'm filming, I have to do like everything on the table. Um, you don't have to put it in the device to ink it up if you've got the space not to. And I'm interested in the frame, so I'm just going to ink up this top part of the block. And you will see that on my registration device, I have got a piece of tracing paper here. And I'm just going to bring that down. The reason I'm using tracing paper is because I find it transfers the ink really well. It doesn't absorb the ink. And what I want to do is to take an impression. So I'm just going to rub that block and take an impression from my print. And then just make sure I've got a nice good covering of ink on my tracing paper and then I'm going to take, while it's still wet, I'm going to take that block out and I'm going to pop in this block here that I'm concerned about so that I can put the wet impression down and as I suspected, yes, there is a little bit of a misalignment there. So I can then take a, another impression, but this time I'm pressing the wet ink from the tracing paper down onto the other block so I can see exactly where that frame should be. And let's just have a sneak peek. Yeah, that's good. So now I've done that, I can see quite clearly where that edge needs to be and where I need to get rid of it. Um, the device I'm using to take the impression is called a Baron, and in another film I'm going to look at all the different ways that you can use to hand print, you know, the, the, the tools you can use to, to take an impression from your material. But working like that, it just allows you to check that things are where they are, they should be, and where you need to cut and where you don't need to cut. So, um offsetting like that, best done with water-based ink because now that water-based ink will dry quite quickly on that lino and I can get on with cutting. 
So I hope that's been helpful and I hope you'll join me for another film.